Welcome back to the Energy Sovereignty Project and our closeout for our third week in September. And so this is a, a, a bit of an interesting closeout this week. So I just finished returning from a round trip to the Bay Area, a very nice trip. And uh, normally what I do in this case is I plug the car in, charge it part way, uh, and then we take a look and see how much battery power we uh, we have remaining. Well. This time, I'm going to go ahead and charge the car all the way. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try actually to bring the system down to zero right when we hit sunset. Now the reason I'm going to do that is, is that for the very first time, I'm seeing that Tesla has engaged what is called Stormwatch. Now I'm not sure how uh, familiar all of you are with current events in California, but in Northern California, PG&E had a problem with creating a fire, the camp fire, and that was created because they didn't clear the lines, uh, the, clear the, the foliage from around the power lines well enough. The winds kicked up, and then it sparked a terrain, it, just a terrible fire up here. Well, they were called on the carpet for that, and in either retaliation or in an abundance of caution, PG&E has announced from time to time that they'll be shutting the power off when we wind up with high winds and warm temperatures. And so today is such a day. Not hot, but it's, you know, it's uh, the temperatures are, are elevated a little bit, and we're looking at sunshine and no rain for the next few days. And so I guess they figured, well, they're going to go ahead and warn everybody that they might shut the power off. Now, <clears throat> obviously, we wouldn't be affected by that at all. But it is an interesting uh, opportunity for us now to test the storm watch feature that Tesla is uh, offering on their Powerwall. Now, we should see a charge rate of about 10 kilowatts, 1.7 kilowatt hours per, or 1.7 kilowatts per power wall, so 10.2 uh, kilowatts or so. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, try and deplete the system as much as we can. We'll wait for sunset and we'll make this a little bit of a two-part intro and we'll see what Stormwatch does for us. Well, the uh, system is showing that it's in Stormwatch mode, but I'm still not seeing uh, any evidence that it is using grid power to charge the system, which is unfortunate. I actually wound up taking the system all the way down to, uh, to zero. We put 45 kilowatt hours back into the vehicle, and that was what was, uh, what was in the uh, power walls, plus a bit we had the AC running, and. I uh, cooked myself a pizza, so the, uh, we were drawing it down uh, uh, fairly, uh, fairly quickly. I wanted to be sure that I got the system depleted while Stormwatch was still active. But uh, so far, I, I, it's just running, it just looks like it's running the house. And so I don't see any, uh, any effect. We are still sitting at 0% uh, uh, in the battery itself and uh, just showing running normal home loads so far. So uh, I'll check back with this uh, a little bit later tonight and uh, hopefully get, uh, get all that information to you prior to uh, uh, preparing the video. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and go back over to the studio and we'll have a look at our recap for our third week in September. Welcome back to the studio. We had a uh, interesting issue to round out our week. And so unfortunately, I'm not able to show you the first test of our storm watch, uh, but instead we'll open this week in review by uh, letting you know what happened to the system and, and how you might uh, avoid having the same thing happen if you uh, happen to be running power walls currently. So I'll know more about this later on today, but the uh, system, while we were depleting it, the power walls were actually doing a firmware update. So, because 
this all happens in the background, there wasn't really any caution warning or anything on the uh, on the screen for us to see. And so then the result of that was because we wound up depleting the system completely, and it went into shutdown without the uh, uh, the, the grid on at the time we were still on zombie apocalypse mode. You'll see that later here. The firmware wasn't able to finish its update. And so when the system came back up, it didn't reinitialize. So I'll uh, keep you updated on that when we do our recap next week. So I uh, opened a ticket with Tesla, so I'm just waiting for them to get back to me. And so we'll, we'll deal with that uh, next week. So anyway, on to the recap. We'll start off here on the 15th, where we left off last time. And uh, again, starting off the third week with some uh, rainy weather uh, following a warm and muggy day. And so that had a lot of AC use in the previous evening. And so as you see here, we barely made it to morning. But uh, we did actually manage some, some decent production during the day. It uh, rained most of the morning and in the late evening. So it left most of the day open for some decent production. And then, as you recall, we supercharged the day before, so there's nothing uh, to the vehicle today. Total supercharger miles, we'll record that later on in the week, and you'll see that come up. So we had uh, slightly reduced home usage, obviously, 18.8 .8 kilowatt hours, and that was due to the cooler temperatures and the cloudy weather. And then, in fact, you can see at the top there, we actually even uh, switched the AC off on this particular day. And so that wound up ending the day at a total of 46% uh, system charge. And notes, just that, no vehicle data to speak of. We're still burning off the supercharger miles. Let's look at that just a second there. And so then uh, the 16th, <clears throat> another rainy day, similar to the prior day, but we uh, did wind up having some still muggy air in the, in the evenings. And so again, opening the windows in the evening wasn't going to work. And so then that caused some AC use, minimal though, uh, mostly just to knock down the temperature a little, but it was enough to list it. And so again, good production, 48.2 kilowatt hours, home usage of uh, only about 20, again, because of the low temperatures and the cloudy weather, about the same as the previous day. And so then, uh, because we didn't put anything to the car, we didn't use much, we ended the day at 68% uh, system charge. At, total solar day so that was good and then the notes again basically just what I said no vehicle data other than the odometer reading here as we're finishing off the last of the supercharger miles so look at that for a second and then the 17th and there you can see the total of our supercharger miles as we kind of bring ourselves back to the uh, uh, regular schedule, total of 217 and a half miles on supercharger. No charge needed to the car today. Obviously, we're just kind of finishing that off. Good production day, 48.2 kilowatt hours again. And this, uh, again, because no charge went to the car, we ended at 96% for a system charge. And then uh, home use, use again, uh, reduced uh, because of those low temperatures. Just under 20 kilowatt hours used. And then the notes, not much to show here again, back to regular charging tomorrow. And then speaking of tomorrow, here's the 18th. Put the system on uh, zombie apocalypse mode today. Uh, earlier in the week, we released a uh, video on how to perform a drawdown test. This was when we did that video. And uh, really wasn't any reason to switch back to grid power, so we just left it off. And production for the day was uh, limited a little bit due to the rain, but not bad. Coming in about 29.7 kilowatt hours. We're still basically able to meet the home consumption, but we did put a huge slug to the car to um, get it ready for a round trip that was coming up later in the week. We want to... Uh, uh, made sure that uh, we looked at the forecast and so you know we anticipated cooler temperatures uh, and sunny conditions so dropping it down to 44 percent wasn't any kind of a risk and then the notes back to recording the vehicle data 
and then you know, show neutral temperatures in the evening so there was little AC use. But a big slug to the car. And then here we have the 19th. As expected, good production for the day, 47.1 kilowatt hours. And that allowed us to take uh, the 10 kilowatt hours that we uh, needed to kind of keep the car charged into its upper regions in preparations for that planned trip on the 21st. And that uh, gave us an end of the day for uh, of 48% uh, system charge at the end of total solar day. And again, the system was still on zombie apocalypse mode following that drawdown. And it's recovering easily. And the notes. Again, just that. 10 kilowatts to the car. Starting uh, the day with 82% uh, charge in the vehicle. Again, keeping only... So we have to just put a small bump to the car on the 21st when we go. So we're just basically trying to replenish what the uh, car is using for the day. And on the 20th, still again on zombie apocalypse mode, production slightly reduced uh, because of some haze, but uh, still good. Coming in at 46.7 kilowatt hours, home usage at 30.9, slightly elevated temperatures, but still pretty cool. And then uh, taking that 12 kilowatt bump again to bring us uh, to 100%. Uh, Giving the power walls a bit of a workout with 30 kilowatts in and out, basically. And then finishing up the day at 58% of total system charge. And the notes, again, replenishing what was used around town driving. Give you a minute with that there. And so, again, this keeps us up to that 90% mark. Ooh, I just noticed I didn't... Uh, I need to... Uh, Put our end of day numbers in there. And so then on the 21st, again we take that bump of 18 kilowatt hours to bring the car up to 100%. And even with that, we ended the day at 63% at total solar day, good production of 46.1 kilowatt hours and cool temperatures. A little bit of AC to round out the day's usage to only 24.7 kilowatt hours. Let you look at that for a second. And then the notes. Again, basically that, we split the charging into two sessions, one uh, 8 kilowatts in the morning uh, to prep us, and then uh, finishing off with a 10 kilowatt uh, hour charge just before we wind up heading out. And again, that's because it's not good to leave the car fully charged for a long period of time. If you need 100% to start a trip, it's best to charge the car to 100% and then, and then go. And then here we have the 22nd to round out our week. And this is where it got interesting. We had decent production, even given the cloudy weather and rain coming in at about 38.1 uh, kilowatt hours. And again, that's about what we expect for that 18 to 20% cloud cover. Production coming in at uh, just, uh, uh, what have we got here? Oh, so there we go. The uh, production of uh, 38.1 and that came just a bit over the home usage so that was good home use of 35.4 kilowatt hours and then we did the system drawdown and again because we took the system to zero by putting a huge slug uh, uh, into the car we obviously didn't make it until morning in fact as you can see here by uh, midnight, we'd already drawn 1.8 kilowatt hours from the grid. So that was uh, a bit of a disaster. And the notes. So, very disappointing to have the uh, system offline like that, but it is what it is. We had a good run with it so far, but these things happen. 
And so now we get to see uh, how long it takes Tesla to uh, respond to uh, the issue. And so this can teach us a couple of things. It'll uh, teach us you know, how responsive uh, uh, Tesla is on, on issues like this. And also that the cautionary tale is to be mindful of the state of system charge. Try not to ever uh, totally deplete that while the while the grid is off. It's never it's probably not a good idea anyway. Again, you've got home electronics that are relying on the batteries being your basically your your home backup, and so uh, it's uh, not a good idea to uh, deplete that fully. But there we go. And so. Uh, until next time, good luck with your own systems. And if you have any questions about any of this and what happened or the resolutions, just feel free to uh, comment on uh, what you see. If uh, this is the first video that you've managed to stumble upon, hopefully you will uh, give us a like and subscribe and follow along with the madness as we continue on with this. And we will see you next time.